April 30. David's Kindness to Barzillai. Barzillai of Gilead had come down from Rogalim to escort the king across the Jordan. He was very old, about eighty, and very wealthy. He was the one who had provided food for the king during his stay in Maenaim. Come across with me and live in Jerusalem, the king said to Barzillai. I will take care of you there. No, he replied. I am far too old to go with the king to Jerusalem. I am eighty years old today, and I can no longer enjoy anything. Food and wine are no longer tasty, and I cannot hear the singers as they sing. I would only be a burden to my lord the king. Just to go across the Jordan River with the king is all the honor I need. Then let me return again to die in my own town, where my father and mother are buried. But here is your servant, my son, Kimham. Let him go with my lord the king and receive whatever you want to give him. Good, the king agreed. Kimham will go with me and I will help him in any way you would like, and I will do for you anything you want. So all the people crossed the Jordan with the king. After David had blessed Barzillai and kissed him, Barzillai returned to his own home. The king then crossed over to Gilgal, taking Kimhim with him. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel escorted the king on his way. An Argument Over the King But all the men of Israel complained to the king, The men of Judah stole the king and didn't give us the honor of helping take you, your household, and all your men across the Jordan. The men of Judah replied, The king is one of our own kinsmen. Why should this make you angry? We haven't eaten any of the king's food or received any special favors. But there are ten tribes in Israel, the others replied. So we have ten times as much right to the king as you do. What right do you have to treat us with such contempt? Weren't we the first to speak of bringing him back to be our king again? The argument continued back and forth, and the men of Judah spoke even more harshly than the men of Israel. The Revolt of Sheba There happened to be a troublemaker there named Sheba, son of Bichri, a man from the tribe of Benjamin. Sheba blew a ram's horn and began to chant, Down with the dynasty of David! We have no interest in the son of Jesse! Come on, you men of Israel, back to your homes! So all the men of Israel deserted David and followed Sheba, son of Bichri. But the men of Judah stayed with their king and escorted him from the Jordan River to Jerusalem. When David came to his palace in Jerusalem, he took the ten concubines he had left to look after the palace and placed them in seclusion. Their needs were provided for, but he no longer slept with them. So each of them lived like a widow until she died. Then the king told Amasa, Mobilize the army of Judah within three days, and report back at that time. So Amasa went out to notify Judah, but it took him longer than the time he had been given. Then David said to Abishai, Sheba, son of Bichri, is going to hurt us more than Absalom did. Quick, take my troops and chase after him before he gets into a fortified town where we can't reach him. So Abishai and Joab, together with the king's bodyguard and all the mighty warriors, set out from Jerusalem to go after Sheba. As they arrived at the great stone in Gibeon, Amasa met them. Joab was wearing his military tunic with a dagger strapped to his belt. As he stepped forward to greet Amasa, he slipped the dagger from its sheath. How are you, my cousin? Joab said, and took him by the beard with his right hand as though to kiss him. Amasa didn't notice the dagger in his left hand, and Joab stabbed him in the stomach with it so that his insides gushed out onto the ground. Joab did not need to strike again, and Amasa soon died. Joab and his brother Abishai left him lying there and continued after Sheba. One of Joab's young men shouted to Amasa's troops, If you are for Joab and David, come and follow Joab. But Amasa lay in his blood in the middle of the road, and Joab's man saw that everyone was stopping to stare at him. So he pulled him off the road into a field and threw a cloak over him. With Amasa's body out of the way, everyone went on with Joab to capture Sheba, son of Bichri. Meanwhile, Sheba traveled through all the tribes of Israel and eventually came to the town of Abel Beth Meekah. All the members of his own clan, the Bichrites, assembled for battle and followed him into the town. When Joab's forces arrived, they attacked Abel Beth Meekah. They built a siege ramp against the town's fortifications and began battering down the wall. But a wise woman in the town called out to Joab, Listen to me, Joab. Come over here so I can talk to you. As he approached, the woman asked, Are you Joab? I am, he replied. 
So she said, Listen carefully to your servant. I'm listening, he said. Then she continued, There used to be a saying, If you want to settle an argument, ask advice at the town of Abel. I am one who is peace-loving and faithful in Israel, but you are destroying an important town in Israel. Why do you want to devour what belongs to the Lord? And Joab replied, Believe me, I don't want to devour or destroy your town. That's not my purpose. All I want is a man named Sheba, son of Bichri, from the hill country of Ephraim, who has revolted against King David. If you hand over this one man to me, I will leave the town in peace. All right the woman replied. We will throw his head over the wall to you. Then the woman went to all the people with her wise advice, and they cut off Sheba's head and threw it out to Joab. So he blew the ram's horn and called his troops back from the attack. They all returned to their homes, and Joab returned to the king at Jerusalem. Now Joab was the commander of the army of Israel. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was captain of the king's bodyguard. Adoniram was in charge of the labor force. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. Shiva was the court secretary. Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Ira, a descendant of Jair, was David's personal priest. Psalm 7 I come to you for protection, O Lord my God. Save me from my persecutors. Rescue me. If you don't, they will maul me like a lion, tearing me to pieces with no one to rescue me. O Lord my God, if I have done wrong, or am guilty of injustice, if I have betrayed a friend, or plundered my enemy without cause, then let my enemies capture me. Let them trample me into the ground and drag my honor in the dust. Arise, O Lord, in anger. Stand up against the fury of my enemies. Wake up, my God, and bring justice. Gather the nations before you. Rule over them from on high. The Lord judges the nations. Declare me righteous, O Lord, for I am innocent almost high. End the evil of those who are wicked and defend the righteous, for you look deep within the mind and heart, O righteous God. God is my shield, saving those whose hearts are true and right. God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. If a person does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. He will prepare his deadly weapons and shoot his flaming arrows. The wicked conceive evil. They are pregnant with trouble and give birth to lies. They dig a deep pit to trap others then fall into it themselves. The trouble they make for others backfires on them. The violence they plan falls on their own heads. I will thank the Lord because He is just. I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. David Avenges the Gibeonites There was a famine during David's reign that lasted for three years. So David asked the Lord about it, and the Lord said, The famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murdering the Gibeonites. So the king summoned the Gibeonites. They were not part of Israel, but were all that was left of the nation of the Amorites. The people of Israel had sworn not to kill them, but Saul, in his zeal for Israel and Judah, had tried to wipe them out. David asked them, What can I do for you? How can I make amends so that you will bless the Lord's people again? Well, money can't settle this matter between us and the family of Saul, the Gibeonites replied. Neither can we demand the life of anyone in Israel. What can I do then? David asked. Just tell me and I will do it for you. Then they replied, It was Saul who planned to destroy us, to keep us from having any place at all in the territory of Israel. So let seven of Saul's sons be handed over to us, and we will execute them before the Lord at Gibeon on the mountain of the Lord. All right, the king said. I will do it. The king spared Jonathan's son Mephibosheth, who was Saul's grandson, because of the oath David and Jonathan had sworn before the Lord. But he gave them Saul's two sons, Armoni and Mephibosheth, whose mother was Rizpah, daughter of Ea. He also gave them the five sons of Saul's daughter Mirab, the wife of Adriel, son of Barzillai, from Maholah. The men of Gibeon executed them on the mountain before the Lord. So all seven of them died together at the beginning of the barley harvest. Then Rizpah, daughter of Ea, the mother of two of the men, spread burlap on a rock and stayed there the entire harvest season. She prevented the scavenger birds from tearing at their bodies during the day and stopped wild animals from eating them at night. 
When David learned what Rizpah, Saul's concubine, had done, he went to the people of Jabesh-Gilead and retrieved the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan. When the Philistines had killed Saul and Jonathan on Mount Gilboa, the people of Jabesh-Gilead stole their bodies from the public square of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hung them. So David obtained the bones of Saul and Jonathan, as well as the bones of the men the Gibeonites had executed. Then the king ordered that they bury the bones in the tomb of Kish, Saul's father, at the town of Zelah in the land of Benjamin. After that, God ended the famine in the land. Battles Against Philistine Giants Once again the Philistines were at war with Israel, and when David and his men were in the thick of battle, David became weak and exhausted. Ishbi Benob was a descendant of the giants. His bronze spearhead weighed more than seven pounds, and he was armed with a new sword. He had cornered David and was about to kill him. But Abishai, son of Zeruiah, came to David's rescue and killed the Philistine. Then David's men declared, You are not going out to battle with us again. Why risk snuffing out the light of Israel? After this, there was another battle against the Philistines at Gob. As they fought, Sibachai from Husha killed Saph, another descendant of the giants. During another battle at Gob, Elhanan, son of Jair from Bethlehem, killed the brother of Goliath of Gath. The handle of his spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. In another battle with the Philistines at Gath, they encountered a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all, who was also a descendant of the giants. But when he defied and taunted Israel, he was killed by Jonathan, the son of David's brother Shimei. These four Philistines were descendants of the giants of Gath, but David and his warriors killed them. Battles Against the Philistines After this, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. As they fought, Sibachai from Husha killed Saph, a descendant of the giants, and so the Philistines were subdued. During another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan, son of Jair, killed Lamai, the brother of Goliath of Gath. The handle of Lamai's spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. In another battle with the Philistines at Gath, they encountered a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all, who was also a descendant of the giants. But when he defied and taunted Israel, he was killed by Jonathan, the son of David's brother Shimei. These Philistines were descendants of the giants of Gath, but David and his warriors killed them.